What's good, Denver? It's Shelly Martinez, your host of Chopping It Up with Shelly at Hollywood Barbershop. This is the Barbershop. Chopping up with Shelly over here at oh Hollywood Barbershop. <laughs> I got James Muhammad, one of uh, one of the young bloods, new addition here to Hollywood Barbershop. What's up, James? What's good? What's good? We live. We live. We live. We live. <laughs> James, uh, how long you uh, how long you been a barber? <sighs> Shit. November is five years. November five yeah. years. No, last November is five years. Damn. Yeah. Look, you guys, this guy has mastered the barber game already. His attention to detail and his, the quality of his work is impeccable. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's Respect. crazy to witness that Respect. at that age and then have that little bit. But didn't you say that, um, where did it all begin for you? So <laughs> my bar, my dad, he's a barber. He's been a barber for like 28 years. So you can say that. My dad. Okay. Yeah. So you, what did you do? Just watch him all the time and... <laughs> Did you take a Did you take a liking to it right away, like at a certain age, or? So originally, it wasn't even a plan. Like, I went to college to try to play sports. Mm -hmm. So, I went to college, Iowa State, was there for a year. Then I went to um, Iowa Central, I was there for a year. And then I went to Texas, and I was there for about a year. And none of the schools worked out. I, my body's made of wood, so I'd always get hurt. Like tore an ACL twice, like broken shoulder. Uh, like I just got hurt a lot. So after I got after school, I just came back home to Lincoln, Nebraska, and just fell into it. Mm. And it was just a wrap ever since. Yeah. Like, was was your dad always nudging you? Oh no, nah, he was. He never. Not, he never. I can't never remember one time he was like, "I think you should do barbering." Like, mm -hmm. I can't remember one time. But he was never the person to like. Well, he never told me to like. He never pushed me to barbering. Yeah, like, like you taking over the family biz. Nah, but it was always something that was like in my plan in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. me being like the firstborn son, his firstborn son. So like, it was kind of always there, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that was my duty type shit, mm -hmm. you know? So do you feel like, uh, is your dad have a different cutting technique or style? He's or old school, he's old he? school. He, he old school, like, you know what I'm saying? He just cord clippers, like, you know what I'm saying? He on the phone cutting, like, you know what I'm saying? Would he still real... have a cord to the phone, or? No, nah, no, nah, he ain't that old school. He ain't, he ain't like that. He, still, he got the cell phone, you know what I'm saying? But, like, okay. my pops, he old school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, so, when did you, when did, because to me, you're a very passionate person. Yeah. So, when did you, like, really find your passion in barber? When I was in school, when I was in college. Yeah, yeah when I was in college of hair design, it was just, at that time for me, I was reading so many books, I was studying so much, and then that went hand to hand with like cutting hair. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I did, it was, since college it was just a wrap. Yeah. Know? I just, I was excited. My brother, my my younger brother, he was, he was a barber before me. He was maybe a year, a year ahead of me. So seeing him on the floor, on the barber floor, and him just being so talented in the barber world, like, at the school, everybody would just watch him cut. Everybody would mm -hmm. admire him cut. He wouldn't miss no. Like we do here. Exactly. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> like he don't miss. He didn't miss no. He didn't miss no uh -huh. uh, days of school. Like so, having that being my example, and then having my pops be the like the you know what I'm saying the head example. It was just like man, I gotta get this. Like mm -hmm. if they can do it, if they so passionate about it, like you know what I'm saying. It's in my blood, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. How do you, what do you think the barbershop, like, how do you, what do you, what does the barbershop mean to you? What does the barbershop mean to me? It's a community. Mm -hmm. When I think of a barbershop, it's like a village, a village, like, just like a village, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's like we, we take, um, we take a part in, in molding the exactly, community, especially exactly. the youth and things yeah. like that. So do you feel like you... You'd like your chair is actually a, a, a format of like like 
um, counseling to your clients? It can be. It can be. I don't necessarily want it to be that personally mm -hmm. for me. I'm at a spot where I just want to excel and try to be the best barber, artist, passionate about my career mm -hmm. as possible. Like, I mean, I'm always open to hearing what people have to say in their, in their lives, but like, I don't want to be that. I don't want that to be the main point. They sit mm -hmm. on my chair, like you come to my chair to talk. I don't want that to be the main thing. Like you're coming to my chair to express like how you feel, how your day. I don't want that to be the main thing. I want you to come to my chair mm -hmm. and want the cut, want what I have to offer with my art, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, um, do you feel like this is your like main chosen profession or do you have something else in your life that you like? Cause you're, how old are you? I'm 28, just turned 28. So you're 28, you're young. Yeah, and, and I mean, you got a lot of life, you know, ahead yeah, of you. Yeah. Do you, is there any other interest that you, <sighs> you find yourself leaning towards besides barbering? Um, I'm into fashion a little bit. Yeah, I got my own brand. Um, I'm into bodybuilding and some, so a couple of things that got my interest, but they kind of go hand in hand with mm -hmm. like life, you know. Tell me about your brand. How did that start? My brand, Apply Pressure. It was something that started just as a reminder to myself to to work hard, to to be the best version of me, you know, that I can be. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder. Just like uh, when you apply pressure to like coal. You know, mm -hmm. enough pressure will turn into like what a diamond, a diamond or something. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Is that kind of like where the concept comes from? That pressure? You, eventually, you punch through the pressure. Exactly, and... exactly. Because personally, for me, <laughs> growing up, it was I, I personally felt I felt a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, just my life. You know. So, I experienced situations where I, I had to sit in that space where you got to sit in that pressure. You got to sit like, damn, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, keep going or fold or, you know, and then you take them steps forward and you're like, damn, I'm glad I did that. I'm shining now. You yeah, know? I mean, a lot of times when we're when we're put into uh, un uncomfortable positions, you know, so you know how you feel like, oh, I don't know, you know, um, it's like if you just push past that, you know, you it's always something better on that Definitely. on that other side of the uncomfortableness, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, if we're, if we're comfortable, we just stay stagnant. You know, we're we're comfortable here. We might not progress. You know, I feel that. that kind of stuff. So that's it's it's really cool. Yeah. So is this a is this a brand that you're trying to get off the ground or? Is um. So like I said, as I started this brand, it wasn't something that. Like it wasn't my goal was never to make this huge. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a reminder to myself. And you know, people got a liking to it, man. Can I get a Can I get a shirt? Can I get a hoodie? And I made, and I, that's, and I make them things. I'm man. like waiting for us to get some. Like, where's <laughs> my name? I got, you, I, you, know got you, I got you, I got you, you know, I got you. What color? You're black. Okay, so like, I got you. But you know, like, people would just ask for the things and it just snowballed. It mm -hmm. just, you know, to what it is now. So it's just like, uh, I just feel like you're so creative. You know what I mean? Like, applied pressure just the, the the way that you put your brand together mm -hmm. and then also the skill that you have and stuff mm -hmm. like that have like have you always been very creative like that it's it's almost about for me like tapping into different sides sides of my head like because in my life I've, I've always been like an aggressive person like I'm going balls to the wall I'm going like real competitive exactly my mom would always say no no holes bar you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so and football and basketball and track and boxing I'm doing I'm just going hard so if you just take that same energy and put it to anything you're going to excel and for me it was bodybuilding clothes cutting hair you know? mm -hmm. I mean I, I would love to see some footage of you playing football because obviously you're just <laughs> kicking ass on the field that's how I envision you doing that yeah but um I mean, just from knowing you in a short amount of time, and you've been with us, what, just a little bit close to a year now? It was a year in September. Was it? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, you're part of the family That's crazy. Um, so, but, I mean, you're so, like I say, attention to detail. You're very disciplined. Like, you know, even, even um, you know, the rest of our brothers in here, I mean, they see you, you know, mm -hmm. getting ready to compete for your fitness or your, your bodybuilding, bodybuilding yeah. and stuff like that. And I mean, your diet, your, your regimen, I mean, it's just so strict, you know, we never see you veer off of it. Like, I've never seen you eat nothing that you're not I supposed off to. It. I, I ain't perfect. I okay, ain't perfect but I'm just yourself. saying, like, yeah. it takes a lot to have yeah. that discipline. 
and having that kind of discipline shows, you know, in your work as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can only imagine, like you're constantly in the books and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and your perspective on life is very in intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting for your age, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of us, you know, we grow and and all this stuff. We have this age on us, you know, yeah. and, and we get wisdom with age, right? But you yeah. already have a lot of wisdom at at the age that you're at, yeah. and that's so so impressive. Respect. Tell me Thank the kind you. of uh, books that you that you dive into. Um, so, right now, right now I'm reading Be Water, My Friend by Bruce Lee's daughter. Okay. Yeah. I was in a bookstore with my girl and there was three books I got. It was The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. I think that's the author. Um, the Be Water, My Friend by Bruce Lee. And there was another book by Malcolm Gladwell. I think it was The Link. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised by the Bruce Lee book. I read like five ten pages at first and I, it didn't really catch my attention and then I was just you know pressing on a little bit mm -hmm. like I usually do in books and it's deep is it it's like deep. what is the what is the be water my friend he, he breaks that he doesn't even break it down she breaks it down because she he passed away when she was five okay so she didn't really have too much and she just breaks that down it's it gets real deep real you get real present, real into the moment, real, it kind of reminds you where you need to be, real, it's real deep, it's mm -hmm. real deep, really deep. Because I mean, when, when I think of water, I think of it being translucent mm -hmm. and um, being adaptive. Being able to mold in any situation, mm -hmm. not letting the situation like, you know. Carry you away, in a sense. Always being present, mm -hmm. always being present, not, there is a point in the book where he was like, don't, um, don't disappear in the moment. In the moments, people sometimes people disappear in their head. But you become, you become water. You just always flowing with mm -hmm. the with the, say for example the conversation. You would, somebody gets stuck on something you said in the conversation. But if you become water, you just flowing through the conversation. You mm -hmm. just fucked up. Just keep going. You know, just flow. You know. Mm -hmm. You always um, strike me as being a, centered in a very positive vibe at mm -hmm. all times. You know, mm -hmm. like. Like there's been times where I've been going through stuff and I know we don't, we, you and I don't share a whole lot as mm -hmm. far as like our personal life yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but it's like, uh, like, you know, there's, there was a time where you were like, uh, in a sense, like, don't, don't let no one steal your energy or something Facts. like that, you Facts. know? Facts. And it's so like, I feel like you, you read people pretty well as well. I don't feel like you're the talkative type of guy who you like, I, I feel like you're very observant. You know, mm -hmm. in, in your surroundings and stuff like that. In life, I feel like that's what you got to be. A lot of people talk. A lot of people talk. And mm -hmm. I notice some people just talk to hide their ignorance. Some people just talk to talk. Some Get people attention. just for attention. But you learn more when you listen. Mm -hmm. You learn more when you see. You just, if you just become present and in the moment, you just watching and hearing and you just, you learn. You know? What kind of what kind of book would you say would be a great starter book for someone who is trying to trying to be more self centered and more positive and and just have a like learn a few more virtues in life that um, that so, you wouldn't actually get from a family member or I got or I got I got two books. The first book is by Paulo Coelho. It's called The Alchemist. I'm sure I think you heard of it, but this it. it's a really popular book. It's get this book. And the second book is The Four Agreements by maybe the same person. Okay. The Four Agreements. These, I don't know the four off the top, but. Those are two to start with. That yeah, those are two books to start with. Like, especially for The Four Agreements, some, two of them, um, make sure you do your best and don't, um, don't, assume, don't make assumptions. Some, those are two, two of the four. And just by, reading these two and how they break them down it's like they unlock things in your head they like open doors and shut doors and things just click that didn't click before and you're just like wow what the you know what i'm saying i have this new perspective this new insight so i'm like dang you know it's like uh it, it it's a different experience like you know you can acquire knowledge about just about anything in the world but Definitely. when you start to acquire knowledge about yourself it's different and you're you're awakened you know Definitely. you're within who you are you yeah. know what i mean because we don't i don't think a lot of people spend that much time on really diving into who they are and, and what they're really meant to be here yeah. in, in the world you know 
Yeah. Um, but uh, that I'm gonna check that book out. I'm gonna get that book. Those two are nice. And if the third one, we go back to the one we were just talking about, the Be Water, my friend. Mm -hmm. I'm about a hundred pages in, and this mug is it's nice. That's what I'm reading right now. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get those two for sure. Yeah. Um. So where do you see yourself uh, with your fitness, your bodybuilding? I don't know. I've been bodybuilding for like four years now. These last, I did three shows these last two years. So during COVID, um, mentally that was, I wouldn't say a lot, but it was a challenge, mm -hmm. a challenge. So this year, I don't necessarily want to put my focus on like trying to prepare for something. I just kind of mm -hmm. want to enjoy life. You now know? you're trying to build mass so that you can oh, move oh. into a higher um, or I heavier. Know. I don't I don't even know. So it gets competitive, doesn't it? It does get competitive and the, and the longer you, and the longer you like stay in this and bodybuilding, it just, mm -hmm. it can kind of get nasty. It's a nasty sport, it could, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that, you know, with with your competitive edge and mm -hmm. your um, your discipline, I yeah. think you could go very far, yeah. you know? Um, would you, I mean, look, bodybuilding, people use juice yeah. to get bigger, to build more mass, things mm -hmm. like that, you know, but there's a lot of really good competitors also that just do it now. Facts. Back. You know, and um, I mean, it's just pushing your body to that next limit. Definitely. But when you get into it, you got to look at it like, what am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. You get to a point where, okay, I'm winning these shows. Mm -hmm. I'm getting this recognition. It's possibly sponsorship, possibly but it's a what, pro card. But what, what is that? Mm -hmm. what, I get this pro card, then what? Mm -hmm. I get this sponsorship, then what? You got to mm -hmm. ask yourself, like, where is this taking me? Where is, where is this taking me? Mm -hmm. You know? So... So you know, would you say right now it's just like a, a hobby? It's something that I enjoy to do. It, it keeps me competitive, mm -hmm. and I love staying competitive, mm -hmm. you know? And so, I mean, it, it only makes you better, you, you know? know? Health as well, and I really mm -hmm. believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, it keeps me healthy. Keeps I me feel like out of out of a lot of people that I meet, like you're the one example to me that um, actually treats their body like a temple, you know? I don't know what you do on your private time. Respect, but I just respect. <laughs> Respect. Might be a whole lot of crazy things going on. I don't <laughs> Respect. know. <laughs> Respect. But that's cool, and, and I mean, it's it's nice to try to you know follow that example. You yeah. know, how do you uh, how do you feel about um, the family that you come into in Hollywood? Solid, we're, solid. It's different. We, we are a solid family, but yeah. we are all different in a yeah. different way yeah. too. Coming out, coming out in Colorado, like people are just different in Colorado. But y'all, y'all a family. Mm -hmm. That's that's the vibe here. That's the family. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's it's good to be around that. I like that. Yeah. Like I said, it's a community, a village. Like my dad would always say, it takes a village to raise mm -hmm. uh, someone, you know. Mm -hmm. And here it's like everybody, in a sense, challenges each other and helps each other grow, you know, like a village should do. Was uh, was was that the same kind of atmosphere it, back home? I've been in three barber shops, and Have this you? is like the combination of all three. Oh wow! You know, it's, uh -huh. yeah, this is like a very nice spot. That's good. Yeah. And you know, I mean, we're so busy here all the time. And I know, you know, we go through our ups and downs, our seasons, you know, like just like anybody. Um, but the, the, the foot traffic is always here, you know, yeah. and the, the phone's usually ringing Consistent. and stuff like that. Um, but um, so what do you, do you ever see yourself having your own barbershop one day? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, having your own barbershop is something that's like down the road, like, the last thing a barber should do, mm -hmm. or at least that I see, like that's something that you want to do when you're done with your journey. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a place because when you have a barber shop, you can't go nowhere as far as like you're in that spot. Mm -hmm. That's your sh that's your house type shit. You know, mm -hmm. like so I still wanna, I still wanna travel. I still wanna do some other things, and you know, definitely down the road though, I have my own barber shop. That's that, for sure. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. What kind of advice do you have for um, like a younger brother that is that? might be wanting to get into the barber game. You, 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 know, you really gotta want it. Like you can't half ass the shit. You can't bullshit. You gotta really want it. Like mm -hmm. you gotta wake up every day like, okay, I'm ready. Like mm -hmm. let's get it. Mm -hmm. You know? You gotta fucking want it. Like it's almost like uh if you're in the wilderness, nobody's just gonna feed you. At all. You have to hunt. At you know all, I mean? you know? You know. So I mean like when when people come in here, I don't see like the way I look at things is like if 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 I tell other barbers that are new or whatever, I say, you know, because there, there used to be a time where, where I had some barbers up here with me and 
they, they would never go downstairs to grab a haircut. They mm -hmm. would just expect people to come up here and nobody ever came up here, you mm -hmm. know, so then they would be making no money or building yeah. a clientele. Right. But I'm like, you know, you have to look at each person that comes in as 25, 35, you know what I mean? You have to think of it kind of like that, like that's your money down there. You're gonna let it sit on the- on Or the, not even, you, yeah, you know? I agree, I agree. You can look at it like that. I see it kind of like this. That's an opportunity to, to better your craft. Mm -hmm. Because your craft is what's making you the money. The money, mm -hmm. like, that's some. That's an added, to, added addition to it. You improve mm -hmm. your craft, then that's just multiplying. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you improve the little things, the details, the, the things that really matter, then that the, the other things will come. The, mm -hmm. the bread, the you know. What about um, making the right choices in life? That's hard. That it is. It's hard. possible. It's easily mm -hmm. possible, but it, it's a day to day thing. It's not okay. This month I'm gonna do this. It's that may not work. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Every decision, minute to minute, every decision that you make adds up to the to the oh, the end, the a month goal, the mm -hmm. six-month goal. But it only happens on a day-to-day basis, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, like a lot of people get get they have too many distractions going on. Whether it's you know people that they've surrounded themselves with that aren't adding value to their lives right. and things like that, or they just feel like they don't have the 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 confidence to to, to go forward you know yeah. so I mean what, what would you say to a, to a younger brother that is kind of just needs some advice <laughs> but it's possible it's mm -hmm. possible you know it's whatever you want is possible you got to fucking want it you got to be consistent you got to know what you want before you want it for like you gotta go into it knowing this is what I want out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know? You gotta kind of have like a plan of it going into it. You know, mm -hmm. but you really gotta want it. You gotta be consistent, like discipline, all these little things that add up to the big statue. You know? Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you do any kind of competitive cutting or anything like that? I want to. That's twenty twenty two. I think that I think that would be amazing. I Definitely. think you would blow people away. Definitely. Because I I look at at your skill and I see like like I I mean. Rob the original, you know who he is, hey, right? I was just looking at you. Uh huh. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like he's so talented, right? But I can see, um, I can see. I'm sorry. I can see uh, you at that at that level. You know what I mean? I mean, you might not be an artist nah, yeah, yeah, in that yeah, sense, yeah. but his cutting level. You know what I mean? So yeah. I mean, I would definitely go for that. And have you ever thought about um, writing a book? Sure. I not. think you. I think you should think about that because you have such a unique. Um, just outlook on things and you're always feeding yourself with knowledge and to to better yourself and, and you're re really self-aware so That's I think right. that you know just like for your age I think you could if you wrote a, a, bro a book that you could really um, reach a lot of people you in the youth yeah. up to where you are and never thought be, about it but yeah shit, something to think about I think so because you're so positive you know what I mean yeah so and how, how's life for you now so we about, I've been here almost two years now, mm -hmm. about two years now. Um, life's good. Shout out to my girl, Kiana. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She hold it down for sure. Good. Um, yeah, life's good right now. Family straight. Um, work is straight. Girl is straight. Like, mm -hmm. I don't got too much to complain about. Health is good. Like, it could be worse, mm -hmm. especially with COVID and everything going on. But like. I'm good. Your hair you looks know? great. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, good. Yeah. Well, um, it was a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what you do in the future. I hope. So. I hope I can. I'll be there to witness it all. <laughs> you know, you. but um, you got you, you're just an amazing person, and I'm I really admire your your your, your go getter attitude. You know, and, and you're just very positive, and you're so talented. So. Just uh, keep believing in yourself For because, sure. you know, sky's the limit, right? For sure, definitely. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. So, Denver, um, check out Applied Pressure. Where can they find you at? Applied Pressure. You can follow me on Instagram, jcuts, J-A-Y-Y-C-U-T-S. And you can follow my Applied Pressure brand, Applied Pressure LLC, uh, on Instagram. Yeah. And you're also on Booksy. So, if you want to uh, check out James's, uh, uh, you know, when you get on his book, because I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed at all. Uh, so, you're on Booksy. Is there a yeah. certain... Uh, search Hollywood Barbershop on Booksy and I can cut you or my bro, my boy Zay can cut you, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, we're all master barbers here at Hollywood Barbershop. So, you know, we're always here for you and the community. So 
Uh, I look forward to seeing you, sure, James. Sure, you know, sure. this chair is always busy, so you know, definitely make that appointment. And one more thing, you do have some uh, beard beard oil. Yeah. So these last maybe two or three months, I've been kind of working on something. When I got to Colorado, I realized it was kind of dry, like really dry out here, mm -hmm. um, especially for us brothers out here. Um, so I created a beard oil called Apply Pressure Serum, AP Serum. Um, the way I like to explain it to people, if you grow in a garden, you focus on the foundation, the skin, the health, the base of the the garden. So I got qualities in this oil, like avocado oil and vitamin E oil to focus on the foundation, the skin. If your skin's healthy, your hair will be, you know, healthy as well. Cool. So check it out. He's got those for sale and they're going for how much? $10. $10. And it's a, a very good size of oil for you. And um, he'll, he'll instruct you on how to use it and everything. For sure. So come see us uh, at Hollywood Barbershop and get on his books sure. and check him out on Instagram. For sure. All right, Denver. Peace.